you mentioned subconcussions, and I think that's a, a that's important to delineate for everybody is that certainly concussions are bad, but when um, we're talking about CTE and its relation to repetitive head injuries, I think we're more so speaking about the exposure to subconcussions. Well, actually, we're we're not using subconcussive anymore mm. unless we're specifically talking about really mild hits. Mm. We use non-concussive. Sure. There are some really interesting studies using sensors out there uh, that I think will help m s make CT make more sense to people, which is the idea that Concussions, you know, happen on a spectrum, right? Some people take really small hits and they cause concussions. Some people take explosive hits, and it's the hardest hit they took all season. But some studies would suggest the average concussions happening about the 90th percentile of the hits you took over a season. So if you imagine that a football player over two seasons takes 2,000 hits to the head, has one diagnosed concussion, the data would suggest they took 200 hits that were harder than that concussion. If you think about it that way, CT makes a ton of sense. If we think concussions are bad for you because they cause a physical brain injury, what about those other 200 hits that probably cause the same microscopic brain injury but just not in places that you would feel or notice or be able to measure or, you know. So I think, I think that's why non-concussive hits would be the more logical cause of CT than diagnosed concussions. So just as severe, just not exacerbating symptoms from the that actual head injury. Right. J well, just well, no. It's it's basically the idea that we're causing silent traumatic brain injuries. Right. Right. Like, I think that's widely accepted in the neurological community at this mm -hmm. point. I was just uh, having a conversation with one of the top people on it. It's a, so you know because it, it's sort of naive to think like okay, eighty six billion neurons, trillions of connections. I take a hit and I'm going to feel one of those neurons die. Like right. no, of course not. So if you accept that you aren't going to feel every brain injury, then I think it's safe to say. We have a ton of brain injuries we don't feel. We have a ton of brain injuries we do feel and never tell anybody. And then we have these really rare times when we show enough signs that someone stops us or we actually volunteer information. Do you think the number of concussions with symptoms is a proxy for the number of non-concussive head impacts that someone might have had over a no. given time period? No. No? I don't, I don't think there's been shown to be much of a correlation. I mean, in theory, like in a football player, like in general, yes. But mm -hmm. there's plenty of people who get a lot of concussions with way fewer hits. And there's some people in our brain bank who were shown to basically be unconcussible during their career. You know, like some people are gen you know, genetically, uh, we hear about it with boxers, they got a, a you know, strong jaw. Strong they can jaw, take yeah. all sorts of hits and they'll never be knocked out or they'll never complain of a symptom. Those people are probably the most at risk, yeah. right? Yeah. Some people would argue the glass brain, you know, people who actually get concussed easier are in some ways protected because they I don't make it as many that. rounds. They may not have as long of a career. Right. Or uh, especially when you see older fighters and they develop a glass jaw, mm -hmm. is that a protective mechanism to stop the sort of non no, I, I wish it was protective. Have. I think it's desperation. <laughs> really? It's you don't, you don't think it's like a protective mechanism potentially going on? You think it's just I just think the, the, brain the burden of the burden of injury? So many brain injuries, your brain can't overcome it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but do you have anything to add regarding these non-concussive versus concussive uh, injuries and how they relate to CTE? Well, I do think these are two different animals and should be treated differently, at least as we, as far as we understand the literature, you know, concussions don't have a one-to-one -one correlation with a lot of things. Number of concussions or age of concussions, things like that, don't correlate to long-term prospective outcomes mm -hmm. and um, only loosely in some cases correlate to a little bit earlier onset of a diagnosis of Alzheimer's, but not necessarily of, um, of CTE and so on. So I think that concussions are really important to consider, especially a concussive injury that one requires accurate diagnosis and good rehabilitation so that symptoms don't linger because that can be really debilitating but it's a completely different thing than CTE and so I think if I can just take one tangent the TUA case really brings up this important thing for the community as a whole the players coaches uh, and, and everybody watching as well as community physicians concussions and post concussive syndrome is not CTE that's something completely different and so when you conflate the two, um, it, it can cause a lot of fear and, and mismanagement. Whereas the non-concussive injuries, the accumulation over time, the thousands of hits uh, over the course of a season or a military tour, um, that is an, another thing. And that's hard to quantify. And looking at the clinical manifestations of that and the long-term risk of any 
dementia, let alone CTE on autopsy, uh, is a different line of research that requires different methods, and it has you know challenges because of the long term that you need to follow somebody. Um, so I think those two things are different. Once we start talking about concussions, we can keep it in that bucket and talk about recovery in the immediate sense and not long-term progressive neurodegenerative conditions because we, we actually, that's a leap and we don't really know. Whereas the subconcussive or non-concussive injuries, um, w that's another conversation we should have it. Yeah, that's an excellent point. 